Quick shot at the other end, though. Bob Wenzel's team will look to try and push it up in transition themselves. Inside, here's Alexander Sasha Cool. He throws it off the chest of Carter. The kick out high. There's a tip up and in by Alexander Cool off the miss by Nimbo Hammonds. And you see why he gives Rucker such problems inside at seven feet one inches. He takes up a ton of space. Credit that hoop to his immense size. Kudosovsky will hand off to Robin James. See Rucker split, spreading the floor. Kudosovsky the three and missing. Rich Ashby follows. He too misses. Ashby with two easy shots in the early going. Can't get either to fall. Vaughn Jones inside the three-point arc. He gives the Colonials a 4-2 lead. Nice ball fake by Jones. He's a good outside shooter at over 40%. From beyond the three, you have to respect him. Gets the defense chasing him. Steps in for the short jumper. Vaughn Jones likes to play against Rutgers. He had 25, a season high, in the previous meeting with the Scarlet Knights. A very versatile player. Can play the one, two, or three for the Colonials. Kobosowski inside, Clark to follow, the kind rim, and we're tied at four. Eric Clark, the Rutgers freshman. Very active, always seems to be around the basketball, especially off the glass. Evans inside, the pass deflected out of bounds by Robin James. It will be GW's ball with 23 seconds remaining. Even though GW has been able to throw over top, Against the pressure defense, Rutgers has done a good job retreating back into the lane. They get it into Hart. Rutgers doubles down. Here's Evans for three. Kwame Evans, a 33% three-point shooter, gives George Washington a 7-4 lead. That's the danger of doubling down inside. Obviously, you want to try and force the ball out of Poole's hands when he has it, but they can spot up from three. Evans needs just two more three-point shots and makes to set a George Washington record for three-point shooting. Clark forces inside, takes it to the hole, and is fouled by Alexander Cool. They call him Sasha out of Borovka, Belarus. Take a look here at the replay. Nice feed inside. Kobosovsky unable to come up with it. And you see the bump there. Kobosovsky was looking for that foul. But instead, it looks like they pick up the foul on Vaughn Jones and not the big guy, Cool. Andrew Kobosovsky will check out. Senior Jamal Phillips. Wearing number 33, 6'7", 230 from Brooklyn out of Grady High School. Comes off the bench for Bob Wenzel. And Clark... Makes the first. He's a 61% free throw shooter. He made three big ones down the stretch in Rutgers' victory over St. Bonaventure. Those foul shots sealed the win for Rutgers. He makes one of two. Cool loses. Kept alive inside. Jamal Phillips from Rich Ashmead. Nice hustle by Ashmead. And here we go. They're switching up the full court zone defenses. Phillips on the ball trying to trap in the backcourt. That's a likes to use a 2 2 1 look. There's a trip by Rich Ashmead as Vaughn Jones hits the deck. Not a smart foul by Richie Ashmead. Reached around, hooked him right out in front of the officials, picks up the foul. Vaughn Jones, the junior out of... Oops, Pat, you running little run in there with the mascot. Knock your headset off. Back mascot with knocked the headset right off me. I guess he didn't like what you were saying when all of a sudden he knows it uh, at halftime picking all those different teams. He's trying to get himself mascot of the year. That won't help his cause. Definitely not. Off the miss by George Washington. Back in the Scarlet Knights. 7-7, 15-40 left here in the first half. Robin James sets for three. Clark up. And the rebound by Antoine Hart of George Washington. In transition, here's Nimbo Hammond. Scarlet Knights take it away. Rich Ashby, Rutgers with numbers. Robin James attacks the basket and is fouled by Alexander Cool. That is his second personal foul. So right away, Rutgers gets the freshman center in foul trouble. See Bob Wenzel there. 
Motion on the sidelines. Gotta like his defense. Rutgers coming up with a number of deflections. And right here, smart play by Robin James. Not backing away, going right at the big guy. We see here from the other angle, he takes the contact, picks up the foul on the big guy, Cool. And James, a senior from Oradell, New Jersey, a 77% free throw shooter, makes the first of two to give Rutgers a one-point lead. Robin James continuing to play terrific basketball, averaging 17 points per game over the last three games. Robin James makes them both. That's the Scarlet Knights' margin of victory as they lead 9-7. Lining it up so far, George Washington, a respectable 43%. Rutgers just 27%. And Rutgers right up in the full court pressure. A little 1-2, one, 1-1 one, one full court pressure. A little more active and aggressive trying to trap in the backcourt. There's Omo Moses into the game. He turns it over. James to Phillips. Jamal Phillips opens up a four-point Rutgers lead as George Washington is attending to Antoine Hart over on the bench. You know, they're working on his hand. He may have dislocated a finger, Rob, as you can see the, uh, the trainer attending to him, and he appears to be in a great deal of pain. And he was all bandaged up on his hands beforehand, so we'll take a look at that. But again, Rutgers doing a very good job in the full court pressure, establishing the traps in the backcourt. Ron Jones shut off by Carter. As Rutgers goes the 2 2 1 trap. Here's Omo Moses inside. Reflected out of bounds. It will be the Colonials' ball with 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Omo Moses, really the only true point guard on this roster for GW who sees meaningful minutes. He'll come in, run the show, give you good defense, and distribute the basketball. In fact, Moses is sixth in the Atlantic 10 in assists per game at 3.85 coming off the bench. They always looking for a good assist to turnover ratio. His is better than two to one. Jamal Phillips picks up the foul on the Scarlet Knights. His first, second on the Scarlet Knights. By the way, Alexander Cool has just one personal foul. Vaughn Jones was awarded the other foul. Traveling the call. On the spot, on the baseline, you can only move on a made basket. Omo Moses traveled with the basketball on the inbounds pass. That's a situation where a player will often ask the referee, can I move? And again, you can only move on a made basket. There's Carter trying to move on Moses. The Rutgers spreading the floor, no one clogging the inside. Phillips will slash through and try and post when the opportunity presents itself. Evans deflected it, Rutgers regains. Ashby trying to look inside to Phillips, taken away by Vaughn Jones. Nimbo Hammond in transition, blocked by Eric Clark. Eric Clark showing you his athletic ability, one to get back involved. Nice hustle up the floor and then the nice rejection. Eric Clark continues to play well. And again, this is just pure athletic ability, running the floor and the swat. Mark, the 6'8 freshman from Rockford, Illinois, leads Rutgers in blocks, averaging just under two a game. Damon Santiago, number 11, in for Rutgers. He controls. Corner for three. Al Corner. Shooting 34% from three-point range, and Rutgers, leading by seven, forces the turnover. Rutgers very active on both ends of the floor right now. Bob Wenzel has to like it. Crowd starting to get into it. GW with six turnovers. Credit the Scarlet Knights pressure defense. Kobosovsky checks in for Eric Clark. Six turnovers for George Washington, who won for Rutgers. Scarlet Knights have cashed him in for four points. Corner. Here's the matchup we talked about. Phillips gets by Cool. Cool blocks it from behind. And it goes out of bounds, I believe, off Nimbo Hammond. Against the big guy inside, Jamal Phillips is going to have to utilize his quickness. No reset on the shot clock, so 14 on the shot clock. Garner. As 
given the Scarlet Knights. They'll get a reset as the ball was kicked by George Washington. Carter has really been a lift for the Scarlet Knights, playing with a stress fracture of the foot. But he has been able to distribute the ball well and also showing the ability to knock down the three when called upon. Well, he's a true point guard who also gives you some scoring from that position. He can get by people, get into the lane, and find open men. The ball movement from Rutgers here tonight. Phillips guarded by Cool. Now 10 on the shot clock as Santiago signals the play. They run the back door for Kobosovsky. He gets Hart up in the air. And it's a jump ball. You see Andrew Kobosovsky getting up. Set the screen, slipped it, was able to get himself down the lane. We see here right there, Andrew Kobosovsky fake set the screen, rolls down the lane. Nice play. Used the pump fake to get Hart up. Just a good play by Hart to come up with the block. Antoine Hart back in the game for George Washington. Again, GW struggling against this full court pressure from Rutgers. Hammonds. And an offensive foul called on George Washington. So not much going right early on for Mike Jarvis and the Colonials. And now Rich Ashley will come back in for Rutgers. He'll replace Robin James. Bob Wenzel getting a number of players in early on as Pete Marcotte now checks in as well. Trying to keep fresh legs. A very active Rutgers team here tonight. Foul was on Antoine Hart, his first. Pete Marcotte, the senior from Middletown, New Jersey. At wearing number 10 in at the point guard spot. Ball movement from Rutgers at times during the season. We've seen them be stagnant offensively. Not so tonight. Phillips inside has it knocked away by Cool. Good entry pass to get it inside to Phillips. He just couldn't finish. And Bon Jones knocks down a three-point basket to cut Rutgers' lead to four. Again, Jones can stick it from beyond the three. In transition, you've got to get back into the lane and then spot the three-point shooters out at the arc. Jones with five for GW. Rutgers really does not have a three-point shooter in the game now. That is, makes it tough to stretch that defense out. Foul is on Antoine Hart. Pushing foul. That is his second. That'll get Omo Moses back into the game. We'll get a timeout on the floor. 11.54 left here in the first half. It's Rutgers leading GW by four. From the floor. George Washington has just one field goal in the last four minutes and 45 seconds. That's what killed them against Temple. They dug themselves a big hole because they were unable to score points in the first half. Clark's back in for Rutgers and for GW, number 52. Anthony Wise, a 6'11 senior from Charleston, South Carolina, is checked in. Marcotte for three. Now well, there'll be a two. He stepped on the line. So a two-pointer for Pete Marcotte. And Rutgers leads by six. Created by Damon Santiago, able to beat his man off the dribble, get penetration into the lane, kicked it out to an open Marcotte. Rutgers now back in that 2-3 zone. Really able to extend it now with Cool on the bench. They do not have the same type of scoring presence inside. Kwame Evans can light it up from outside, however. And His three-pointer cuts it to three. Can extend it quite far enough. That was a deep three-point shot from Evans. And after struggling against Temple, scoring just six points, he has six already in the early going. That was the first time in 32 games that Evans was held to single digits in scoring. Here's Eric Clark cleaning up the offensive rebound, and Nimbo Hammonds is shaken up for the Colonials. He's been bothered by a sore ankle. He took a shot on a tough screen from Andrew Kobolsavsky. And how about Eric Clark 
again, continues to be very active. He now has five. GW swings it, and Moses lost it. Kobolsovsky had it, and it was deflected out of bounds by Kwame Evans. So we'll go over to Rutgers, another turnover, and Bob Wenzel has to be happy with the defense that has really seen taking George Washington out of its flow. Just as they came into it with their game plan, the full court pressure has given them problems, and then the active zone defense extending out to the three-point line. Rich Ashby took it inside, had his shot altered, and then picked up the personal foul on a hold after he had missed the shot. And I believe that is two on Rich Ashby. Ashby's been able to get himself into the lane. That's the third chippy he's missed. Ashby at his best when he's slashing and driving to the goal, just unable to finish here tonight. And Robin James comes back in replacing Ashby now. That gives you a little bit of a difference. Ashby, the slasher and driver. Robin James, the guy who can spot up from beyond the thread. Evans, in and out. Kept alive by Wise and collected by Robin James. Stella Knights, four on two. Marka off to Kobosowski. Blocked by Anthony Wise. They call him the big ant. Back at center, and he's getting legitimate minutes with Alexander Kuhl on the bench. You see here out in transition, Pete Marcotte tries to force the action. Good pass here to Kobolsowski, but Wise just blocked that thing from about his chest there. 18-13, 9.30 left in the first half. Rutgers up by five here on our PSCNG Game of the Week. Good solid man-to-man -man defense by GW. Clark looks baseline, Robin James. James trying to get it back out to Marcotte. Taken away by Omo Moses. Back to Evans. In transition for the pull-up jumper, Kwame Evans. See, the first thing on Omo Moses' mind is, who's open? Who can I get the ball? True point guard. Good distribution finds Evans trailing the play. Evans with eight for the Colonials. And here's that solid man-to-man -man defense. The staple of Mike Jarvis's teams. Santiago off to Clark. Clark lost it when he went up, regained. Back out James. James, a good three-point shooter at 40%, hasn't found his stroke tonight. DW challenges every shot too defensively, makes it tough to find a good look. Tommy Evans, another three, now with 11 points. And the nice thing about him, says Mike Jarvis, is I know he can get better. <laughs> he already leads the Atlantic 10, averaging just under 20 points a game. With his size, again, another guy that gives you some matchup problems at six foot six, usually matched up against the guard, shoots over top. Tied 18 apiece, George Washington with a chance to take the lead. There's the reverse by Tommy Evans. And Bob Wenzel has a TV timeout coming up at the next dead ball, and he certainly will look for that. GW on a run here to take the two-point lead. Clark in the corner. Santiago, he pulls up the floater and air ball. There's Omo Moses, kicks it, loses, and then fouls Damon Santiago. Been a rough first half for Omo Moses. There's a timeout on the floor with 7.29 to play. Mike Jarvis and the Colonials leading by two. We'll be right back. For GW. Jamal Phillips and Alexander Cool back into the contest now. Corner and Marcotte. The Rutgers guards along with Robin James. Here's Phillips. Al Corner. His second three-point basket of the night. Nice inside out. They get it to Phillips. Defense collapses. Kick it out to an open corner. Rutgers by one. Corner with six points. There's that 2-2-1 full court pressure. Keeping the offense in front of you. Making GW take some time off the shot clock. Moses off for Nimbo Hammond. Marka reaches hit against Cool. 5-7 against 7-1. Tough to get a hold of that ball. 
Bart for the rebound off the Evans miss. Goes corner to Phillips. Jamal Phillips, the senior, trying to go out in style, stretches the lead for Rutgers to three, and Phillips with six points already. And no hesitation from Phillips. A catch, one strong dribble, up to the goal. Phillips who averages 10 points a game is also going to lead Rutgers in rebounding for the fourth straight year. Hammonds for three. That was way outside. And they're waging war inside. Phillips and Poole. And Jamal is going to have to keep his cool. He's charged with his second personal foul. Bob Wenzel contesting the call. Well, that was a good call, and we'll take a look as we see it in here. The two guys battling, and clearly the push off from Jamal Phillips. It's one thing to battle inside. You extend your arms and push off like that. Clearly a foul. Hammonds, the deep three. Limbo Hammonds, the co-captain, a senior out of Lexington, Kentucky. His first basket of the night. Tied at 23, 553 look here in the first half. Phillips trying to step away from the basket, try and bring the big guy out onto the perimeter. It works. They get the basket inside from Clark. Eric Clark, and one coming off the feed from Jamal Phillips. All started when Phillips stepped himself away from the goal. What that does is it brings the big seven-foot-one guy around. Simple basketball, the old pick and roll, and a nice roll and dunk by Eric Clark. Foul goes on Nimbo Hammonds. That is his first. That'll get Anthony Wise, the senior from Charleston, in the game for GW. Cool sits down. Eric Clark continuing to improve here in the late stages. He has seven points. There's the miss. James the follow. Robin James will go to the line for two. Rutgers seems to step quicker than GW here tonight. Seems like almost every loose ball, there's a Rutgers player there to come up with. Second foul on Omo Moses. And seven on the Colonials, but Robin James, a 77% free throw shooter. Now with three points. You know, when Charles Jones was suspended three games ago, Bob Wenzel and his staff asked themselves, where are those points going to come from? Jones was a leading scorer at 14 a game. Well, this guy, Robin James, has stepped up and added three points to those 14. He's averaged 17 in three starts. Phillips called for the foul on Omo Moses. And that will be three on Phillips. That's a tough foul there for Phillips. 70 feet from the goal, not where you want him picking up his third foul. He heads to the bench. There it is again, Moses. Scarlet Knights collapsing on Omo. And Jamal says, oh no. <laughs> there you go. I knew you were getting that one in here sometime soon. <laughs> Carter in transition off to Santiago. And Damon Santiago is fouled in the act of shooting. Bob Wenzel wants to get his team out in transition when they have the opportunity. And right here, nice play coming right at you there. Damon Santiago attacking the rim. That's when he's at his best, when he has the basketball and attacking the rim. Billy Calloway, a senior from Evansville, Indiana, wearing number 24, comes in as Omo Moses has picked up his third personal foul. Damon Santiago at the line now. A 55% free throw shooter. A junior from the Bronx out of Adlai Stevenson High School. Santiago, a guy who his first two years here at Rutgers, he was the point guard, was used to playing without the basketball, has struggled since Albert Carter became the point guard at times. He needs the basketball to score. Rutgers by four, 27-23. Santiago working on Vaughn Jones. They've got Callaway in. Callaway does not put a lot of minutes for George Washington. A 
serve guard. GW able to throw over top of the full court pressure, but again, Rutgers doing a very good job of hustling back and getting involved with the plays. See, Mike Jarvis was looking for a foul there on Kwame Evans as he went to the goal. Mike Jarvis had said earlier today, we're really a six-man team at this point, but he has to go into his bench as foul trouble. Wings in here in the first half. There's Nimbo Hammonds for three. He cuts Rutgers lead to one. 27-26, 4.38 left, Clark inside. And Rutgers has done a good job to work it inside and get George Washington into foul trouble. It goes on Kwame Evans, that is his first. They recognize the mismatch inside. Eric Clark posting up Kwame Evans, who's used to playing out on the perimeter defensively against guards. And Eric Clark strong to the goal once again. Eric Clark has been the standout performer of the freshman class for Bob Wenzel. He's been making a run trying to see if he can't get himself on the Atlantic 10 all-freshman team. And the way he's been playing lately, he just may find himself with those postseason honors. Our all-NJN teams coming up at halftime. Eric Clark coming off a nine-point performance against St. Bonaventure has eight tonight with plenty of time left in the first half. So Evans there pull up out in transition. Looked like he was going to pull it from deep. A lot of confidence in his ability to step up from beyond the three-point line. Rutgers now in a 1-3-1 one, one look. A little different look as they stretch the zone out. We talked about giving some different looks to GW just to try and get them out of sync, get them out of rhythm offensively. Clark tries to set a screen for corner. Carter. Back out, Robin James. His first three-point basket of the night. A wide-open look for James as he just stepped himself into the shot. Nice kick out by Carter. James with six. Rutgers back up by five. And Callaway pulls up short of the half-court line. It'll be Von Jones setting the offense for George Washington. By the time GW gets up the court after attacking that zone press, there's only 20 to 25 seconds left in which to attack the zone defense. Jones bothered by corner. Hammonds in the corner. Kwame Evans dribbling on his knees. Back to Nimbo for a nifty three-point basket. Yeah, how about that? He looked like Marcus Haynes there dribbling from his knees. Gets the kick out to Hammonds. And Hammonds, a blocking foul on Al Corner the other way. Hammonds hitting the three just as the shot clock expired. Making the extra pass, good ball movement. But again, Rutgers able to force GW to take time off that shot clock with the full court pressure. Gives them less time to try and find openings in the zone day. Foul on Hammonds, his second. Alexander Cool comes back in for George Washington. As does Antoine Hart. Carter leading the Atlantic 10. 85% from the free throw line. He has seven points. The junior from Zagreb, Croatia. At 85%, good for 14th in the country. Carter makes both. And we'll take a timeout. 3.05 left in the first half. It is Rutgers leading George Washington by four. Into a number of turnovers, and I have to say that's the, the story of the first half. It's been very successful with them. They've given it different looks, try to mix things up. Colonials have to think as they attack that full court pressure. Hammonds, who has been hot from three-point range. In fact, George Washington shooting 50% beyond the three-point arc. They're a 31% three-point shooting team on the season. There's another for Nimbo Hammonds. He threw that one in from the front row. And remember, they were just three of 21 as a team in their loss the other night to Temple. They have really turned it around, finding the range here tonight. Kobosowski back in for Rutgers, goes on cool, back to corner. Now corner challenges inside, has it deflected. Clark crashes the boards. And away with the rebound is Nimbo Hammond. 
A one point ball game. GW able to spot three guys behind the line who can knock it down in Jones, Evans, and Nimbo Hammonds, and they've been on fire here tonight. Antoine Hart handling, cool, looking for the ball in the low post. Here's Vaughn Jones. Rebound to flex down low to Antoine Hart, so GW will get a second chance with 140 left here in the first half. It's one heart working the offensive boards. And points in the paint. Rutgers with 18. They had a tough time controlling GW in the first meeting. Here's Clark from Damon Santiago. Nice beat ahead by Santiago. And again, Clark out running the break. When he's at his best, utilizing his athletic ability in transition. All right, Clark in double figures with 10. Hart missing. Rebound, Cool collects to Kwame Evans. Off glass for two. Nice skip pass across the lane from the big guy. Finds a wide open Evans. Evans with 15 points. Well, he certainly bounced back big after his tough performance against Temple. Robin James. Off glass, missed iron. Here's Hammonds. Evans, first three point shot is in and out. Cool kept it alive. Kolosovsky hammered him inside. You see GW just spotting up from beyond the three-point line, stretching the Rutgers defense out, and that allows Cool to isolate himself in on the low block. Gets the put back, picks up the foul. Bob Wenzel with 37.2 seconds left in the first half. Now checking in for George Washington, number 43 is Ferdinand Williams, a sophomore from Perth Amboy, out of Perth Amboy Tech. Local product, won a state championship there when he was at Perth Amboy. Getting some playing time back here in New Jersey. Cool rattles in the first free throw. He has already been the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week four times this season for Mike Jarvis. As we said, either he or Johnny Miller from Temple, who's been making a run as of late. But you got to look to Alexander Cool as the guy to beat for the race for the Rookie of the Year. About a one-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Rutgers will hold it out and hold for that last shot. We are tied at 35 apiece. with 10 on the shot clock, Rutgers. Little 2-3 zone here from GW. First time we've seen zone from them tonight. Santiago off to James. He knocks down a three-point basket. Good execution from Rutgers. They get James spotting up against a 2-3 zone. Nice three-point shot to end the half. Nine points in the first half for the senior, Robin James. He gives the Scarlet Knights a 38-35 lead the half. Coca-Cola is proud to support Rutgers basketball tournament upsetting UAB. Rutgers comes back with Clark, Carter, Kobosowski, James, and Rich Ashby. There's James shot blocked by Antoine Hart. Hammonds wants to go back to Kwame Evans, and Evans draws the foul. Also on the court for GW, Vaughn Jones and Alexander Cool. That is the second personal on Andrew Kobosowski. Kwame Evans, the leading scorer in the game, back to the line for two. Well, you know, it's the second half. Bob Wenzel's got his sport coat off. All he needs is a vest, and then he's just like P.J. Carlissimo. You know, you go into halftime, change things up, Who did you say? Oh, yeah, yeah. That he guy he coached in Port Portland. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. used to be around right there. He used to do a show or something like that. <laughs> I remember him. Evans cuts Rutgers' lead to one point. He has 17 points now. GW. And it's GW with full court pressure. Showing a little full court pressure. Mike Jarvis looking to try to get some more life out of his team. And a blocking foul on Nimbo Hammond. 
That will be his third. Hammonds, who had 21 points against Temple. 1,000 point score for Mike Jarvis. Rutgers with a fresh 35 second on the shot clock. Here's Kobosowski. Not normally a three point shooter, but Andrew finds the range and extends Rutgers' lead to four. Hammonds, offensive foul. And a costly one. That is four on Nimbo Hammonds. That was a tough call, and Hammonds got himself into the lane. Good defense by Robin James to hold his position, but that's a tough offensive foul. Looked like Hammonds just took it strong up to the goal. That's a tough call, and he'll head to the bench in foul trouble. Hammonds picked up the fourth personal. Omo Moses back in the game, and Mike Jarvis imploring the officials. Tough call. 41-37, opening minute of the second half. Ashby. And Rich Ashby hits the floor. And that is Vaughn Jones picking up his second personal foul. One thing to pick up an offensive foul if you're driving to the goal and they're charging in, but he just gathered himself, went up strong for the little jump shot. That is a tough call against Hammond. Ashby inside, travel with the ball. Got himself pinned inside, but again, Ashmead able to get himself into the lane. It's just a matter of time until he converts. Omo Moses running the show now for George Washington. GW has turned the ball over 12 times to four by the Scarlet Knights. Very nearly another turnover. Active defense from that zone. Rutgers in that 2-3. That's been one of the reasons why the Scarlet Knights have Turned it around as Clark flicked it away. Hart in and out. And Carter comes away with the ball. He has numbers. Kobosowski inside. Eric Clark, the freshman, finishes. He has a dozen. Nice and selfish ball movement out in the open floor. Carter ahead to Kobosowski. And then right away ahead of the floor finds the open Clark. And a foul called on Robin James. Bob Wenzel was up on his feet imploring the crowd, let's get it going. You see him there extending his hands, and that's the key to the zone defense. You can't stand back, play zone defense by just putting your hand. You have to be active and aggressive. Guard the man in your area. And the Scarlet Knights, as they try to get back to the 500 level, have done it with a number of combinations and a number of players each stepping up. Here's Alexander Cool. Powering inside against Eric Clark. Rutgers lost Sion Gibbons to academic problems. Also lost Charles Jones, who is still in school but unable to practice or play with the team on a academic suspension from Bob Wessel. Al Carter. 45-39. Rutgers 17-30 left. Corner now with 10. Excuse me, Rob. And there's that scoring offense that he brings from the point guard spot. Able to get himself penetrating, pulls up, nice strong finish. Ron Jones into cool. Eric Clark will get whistled for the foul. And the fans here at the Athletic Center feel that he had a lot of ball. Mike Jarvis, though, won't disagree with that call. Well, he figures we got a tough call on our guy, Nimbo Hammond, sent him to the bench as Bob Wenzel diagrams things on the sideline. And Rutgers just a tough matchup with Poole. They don't really have anybody that can body up with him inside. Awful lot of ball on that one, but the big guy creates the foul. Alexander Poole missing the first of two, a former member of the Belarus national team. First meeting, he really wore Rutgers down in the second half, finished with 24 and 12, many of those in the second half. One of two players from Belarus, along with freshman Andrea Spirada. Rutgers breaks this full court pressure. Good job, by the way, just to try and get that name in there. I thought you'd whip out and not try and get it in. No, well, Ashby didn't whip out. He took it to the hoop and was called for the offensive foul. Ashmead slashing to the goal. The big guy, Cool, has position. Looked like he was moving on that. Gets the benefit of the doubt. 
figure if you're 7-1, you're not going to be able to stay with the quick guy, so just as long as you have some position established. Nashmead picked up his third personal foul. Kwame Evans for three. Nashmead hit the floor as the shot went in the air. And it's going to be on the big guy, Alexander Kuhl. That is his second. That was a frustration foul. Ashby trying to box him out, establish some position, giving up a good seven, eight inches on the big guy inside. Kuhl called for the push-off. Rutgers by five. Carter with the ball. James squares for three. When he feels it, he's tough. He now has... 12 points for the Scarlet Knights, and they extend their lead to eight. 12 points on four threes when he has his feet set. A good look at the goal. He's deadly from beyond the three-point line. And there's James with the steal at the defensive end of the floor. As we said, since Charles Jones has been suspended, he has really stepped it up, picked up the slack. James, before the shot, no basket. And a foul on George Washington. Robin James, averaging to 7.6 on the season, was a player who did not get a lot of minutes, but when the uh, openings occurred in the backcourt, he has really stepped up, including a career-high 26 against Rhode Island. Well, he's had three straight games of double figures, averaged 17 a game since he's gotten those extended minutes with the suspension of Charles Jones. And sometimes when you know as a player that you're going to get extended minutes instead of in there and pulled right back out, you're much more comfortable and get on a run. Oh, baby, Jamal Phillips with an air ball. In the break, Kwame Evans for two, slices the lead to six. 48-42. So smooth out in the open floor, coming to the other side of the goal. Nice move. Carter answering for Rutgers. Al Carter. Close by Omo Moses. Omo Moses just standing there. Carter with a wide open layup. Phillips trying to front Alexander Cool. And Jamal will draw the foul. That is the fourth on the senior out of Brooklyn, New York. That'll send him to the bench with foul trouble. We get a timeout on the floor. Jamal doesn't like it. He's got four. Rutgers leads by eight. Trigger for the Colonials. Gets it into Cool. Clark may have deflected. Cool, second try. And Eric Clark pulls down the third opportunity. And he went up for that rebound. That was taken above the rim. Big minutes tonight for Eric Clark, the freshman from Rockford, Illinois. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Clearly, he's the type of player that can excel in the Big East. Robin James wound up on the hip of Alexander Cool and turned it over for Rutgers. Now Nimbo Hammonds coming back in for George Washington, replacing Vaughn Jones. So Hammonds playing with four personal fouls. Trailing by eight, Mike Jarvis figures this is an important time, important stretch. Wants to go with one of his money men, Nimbo Hammond. Moses trying to create, back to Hammonds, just off the bench, he nails a three-point basket. Oh, looks like a good substitution right off the bat. Omo Moses penetrating, spinning. Crowd thought it was a walk, but kicked it out to the open Hammonds for three. 15 points for Hammonds. Rutgers by five. Bob Wenzel up, calling the play from the sideline. Will screen the screener, try to free up Robin James. Carter wants to go. There's Cool in the middle, but Al Carter finds a way to score. He's got such good strength that when he gets himself into the lane, he's able to finish. He has 14 here tonight. Three straight double-figure scoring games for him. Hammonds back to Omo Moses. Inside, Antoine Hart. 
Good ball movement by George Washington as Moses found Hart on the baseline for his first basket of the night. Make that extra pass, you find the guy wide open. Rutgers made the mistake of running out at Moses. He's a non-threat offensively out on the perimeter. Clark sets a screen for corner. Santiago short off the front iron, kept alive by Phillips. Clark comes out of it holding his neck. He was sandwiched between Cool and Antoine Hart. That's what happens when you get banged around by the seven foot one guy inside. Whiplash. Cool picks up his third foul. Moses will sit down. Vaughn Jones back in for Mike Jarvis. Here's Phillips. And Alexander Cool from behind picks up personal number four. Mike Jarvis can't believe it. Those are two quick fouls on the big guy inside. The ball Phillips utilized his quickness. The first step got by Cool. Cool looked like he got a good block on it, and that's why Mike Jarvis is upset. Anthony Wise comes in for Alexander Cool. Cool, who replaces Yinkadare in the middle for the Colonials. Played for the Belarus national team and was on a tour against Atlantic 10 teams. And Jarvis saw him and really liked the numbers he put up against Dare. 12.7 rebounds, three blocks. A lot of people thought the GW would be down with Dare opting to head to the NBA a year early, but Mike Jarvis went out and found the guy he could plug in the middle, and Alexander Cool has been one of the keys to their success this season. Jamal Phillips making the first and the second. Phillips, who broke the 1,000-point mark against Rhode Island earlier this year, giving Rutgers a seven-point lead with 12.55 remaining in the second half. And Rutgers extending that zone defense out. You have to challenge to three because guys like Nimbo Hammond's on fire. Jamal Phillips fouling Nimbo Hammonds as he shot to three, and I believe that's all for Jamal Phillips. And how about the substitution by Mike Jarvis showing you something, going to the bench, bringing in Hammonds, even though he has 4,000, he's responded with two quick threes as a chance at the rare four-point play. That is the fourth on Jamal Phillips, and Nimbo Hammonds at the line. It's one way to get back in. Hammonds is six for eight from three-point range. There's a four-point play, and that cuts Rutgers' lead to three, 54-51. Now it's Mike Jarvis who puts on the full-court pressure. Clark had it deflected by Hammonds. And Antoine Hart there for George Washington. Anthony Wise now playing that high post spot for George Washington. Now with Poole out of the game, they do not have that scoring presence inside, but you've got to get out and mark people beyond the three-point line. GW's been killing the Scarlet Knights with the deep shot. There's Hart over Phillips. Antoine Hart who has started every game as a senior and really come on now with four points. Closing Rutgers lead to one. Corner off to Phillips. Good look by Corner and Jamal cashes it in for a couple. There's that dribble penetration again by Corner, able to beat the defender off the dribble. Antoine Hart turns the ball over. We get a timeout on the floor. Rutgers leading George Washington, 56-53 themselves into the NCAA tournament. They will be one of three teams from the Atlantic 10 making it. Look for the Colonials of GW as well as UMass to represent the A-10 in the NCAA. 11.40 to play. Rutgers leading 56-53. Interesting stats, Rob, is that Rutgers has outscored George Washington in the paint 32-19. That's a stat that GW dominated in the first game, so Rutgers doing it in the paint once again. Santiago to Phillips as Rutgers breaks the pressure. 12 points now for Jamal. 
Many of those points in the paint have been in transition. Ron Jones shot. Who's got it? Great Hammond. play. Deflected it to Anthony Wise. Beautiful play by Nimbo Hammonds as he was on the court. Somehow he was able to tap it ahead to a teammate lying flat on his stomach. Great hustle by Hammonds. Remember, he's playing with four fouls. Ron Jones now at the point. Kwame Evans for three. Anthony Wise had a chance at it. It goes out of bounds off Wise. It will be Rutgers' ball. Speaking of the A-10 tournament, this game that we're seeing here tonight, Bob Wenzel's Scarlet Knights against Mike Jarvis's GW Colonials, that could be the same matchup in that quarterfinal round at the Palestra on Sunday. George Washington needs to win to hang on to second place in the A-10. James passed one up. He hasn't done that often tonight. Clark traveled with the ball as he tried to kick it back out on the wing to Robin James. Well, it's been a scrappy game, Rob. Well, for both teams. And check out this play, though, by Nimbo Hammonds. Looks like he has no shot at it. Spinning down on the floor, taps it ahead. What a great presence. You know, he's flat out on the court. Great hustle and great presence by the senior. Evans, Phillips has to be careful. He's got four personal fouls. Here's Vaughn Jones. Floats from the foul line for two. That's where Jones' size takes over at six foot six. Able to get himself into the lane. Tough matchup for the guards outside. Jones with seven. We've got a three-point game. Midway through the second half. GW showing a little bit of zone. Carter from the corner. Rebounded by Jamal Phillips. He puts it up. Count it. And the foul. Jamal Phillips. Phillips established good position inside. One thing that's difficult out of the zone defense is to find a man to block out. And the missed shot by Carter Phillips just slid himself inside. And take a look here at the rebound. The shot from the corner. And again, in the zone defense, no set box out responsibility. And Phillips able to sneak inside for the putback. Bobby Evans picks up his second personal foul and Jamal Phillips with a strong outing tonight. 15 points he is perfect from the line with a couple of rebounds as well. And Rutgers is back up by six. So each team getting contributions from their guy with four fouls. For GW, it's been Hammonds. For Rutgers, it's been Jamal Phillips. Hammonds guarded by Santiago. Phillips reaches in to help out and forces the traveling violation. Hammonds forced it there, trying to make something happen. Got himself into the lane. Turned it over. GW with 14 turnovers to eight for Rutgers. Valley double on corner. He finds Clark at the foul line. Phillips. Jamal Phillips from 12 feet. Nice play by Clark, the freshman. Put the ball, got rid of it right away, and Jamal Phillips stepped up for the short jab. Really one of the strongest performances of his senior season as Evans answers at the other end for George Washington. Phillips with 17 points. Evans now with 21. Well, you need a basket, who do you go to? But your go-to guy, leading scorer in the Atlantic 10, Evans with two. Carter to Phillips. 19 for Jamal. Wow, he has stepped it up. He wants to make this senior night a memorable one. Big performance from Phillips. 65-57, 8-10 remaining. Jones. Gets a pick from Hart and scores in a screened off corner. You got to step up there defensively. Whoever's man is setting the screen, you got to talk and step out and hedge. Then Jones gets by the screen, into the lane, pulls up for two. Corner. Back out, Robin James, deflected by Kwame Evans. Nice D by Evans, got out, challenged the shot. Phillips now has to come out and challenge Evans. And Vaughn Jones will reset the offense. Anthony 
Anthony Wise sets the screen. Kimbo Hammond. There's Wise over the back of Eric Clark. They'll get Wise for his second personal foul. Wise active on the offensive boards, but good defense. A box out by the Scarlet Knights. That'll send Rutgers to the foul line for a 1-1. One -one. Mike Jarvis searching for combinations. He sends Alexander Cool back into the game. And Clark will go to the line. Here's another look. The Rutgers much more settled in their zone defense. They've been playing it for a while. So they're used to box out responsibilities in that zone defense. And Clark, established position, created the foul. Larry Clark now with 13 points and eight rebounds. This is a season-high effort for the freshman, Eric Clark. Again, he continues to play extremely well down the stretch. He's been getting more and more minutes. In fact, he's been getting minutes in favor of Jamal Phillips. But tonight, Phillips and he seeing a lot of action together. Clark now with 13 points. Rutgers leading 66-59. Big offensive possession for GW. And Evans was intending to pass for Hammonds, deflected by Rutgers. Timeout on the floor, 7.04 left. Jamal Phillips leading the Scarlet Knights in his seniors' home finale. Points 8 of 11 from the field. Nice off the inbounds. Nice Rutgers D by Rutgers. Turnover. Yep, good D by Rutgers. Jones forced to try and skip it across the floor. Basket got in the way. Turnover for RU. 15 turnover by George Washington. Carter into Phillips. Santiago back into Jamal. Jamal with 21. And Rutgers. Back up by nine points, their largest lead of the second half. They've got Al Carter for the foul, and George Washington will be shooting the one and one with 6.37 remaining. Antoine Hart, a guy that Mike Jarvis called a miracle this season. As you said, started every game, has posted good numbers, a little over 10 points a game. That after averaging just seven minutes a game last year, well, he's had a big senior season. He misses the front end. His previous career average just under two points a game, averaging 10 points as a senior, and has played in almost 850 minutes after playing 121. GW, excuse me, Pat goes back to the man-to-man -man defense, and now they've got cool Garden Phillips. Garner with the Colonials. Working closely on the point guard for Rutgers. Five in the shot clock. Corner into the lane. Gets it off to Phillips. Blocked by Alexander Cool. Clark gets it up. A shot clock violation by the Scarlet Knights. As Phillips' first shot did not hit iron. No oh, good defense by the big guy Cool playing with four fouls. Comes across, picked up the good block. And again, that's a switch up by GW getting him back on Jamal Phillips. Kwame Evans. Cool the put back. No. And Robin James draws the foul. And paid the price against Alexander Cool as he caught an elbow in the face. The crowd gets up as we take a second look here. Off the miss shot, Cool establishes inside position. This is the first one. Doesn't put it against the board, stays with it. Clearly the foul by Robin James, but then a little bit of a tomahawk chop catches Robin James across the face. Alexander Cool will go to the line. Coming off a 15-point performance against Temple where he was 6 of 7 for Mike Jarvis. Jarvis says when Cool's strength catches up with his frame, is going to be a dominant force as he learns to play in the U.S. college game. And he's already made his presence felt. Almost 13 points per game. 
As we said, he has really filled the void with Daré leaving for the NBA. He has stepped right in. Eight points, eight rebounds for Alexander Cool. Slicing Rutgers lead to seven. Kwame Evans, guilty of the foul. That is his third. When you get out in the full court press, you want to try and force people into traps, but you don't want to be reaching and grabbing. So Mark Jarvis right up to the official. Richie Sanfilippo after that call, trying to figure out where it was. Jamal Phillips. At the line for Bob Wetzel. Shooting two. George Washington now with 10 team fouls. Phillips tying a season high with 22 points. He had 22 against Duquesne earlier this season. Rutgers now with a big advantage from the foul line in the first game. It was GW with the huge advantage. 33 to 12 from the foul line. Rutgers has turned that around here tonight. Phillips with 23 points, 5 of 5 from the line, 9 of 13 from the field. A season high for the senior. GW now, every possession on the offensive end becomes bigger and bigger. And they turn it over. Early in the game, it was the full court pressure from Rutgers that forced turnovers. Here in the second half, it's been the active half court zone defense. James quickly ahead to Clark. And Phillips turns it back outside. Rutgers will reset with a nine-point lead and 5.20 left in the second half. And we'll see him spread the floor, try and bring the big guy, Alexander Cool, away from the basket, try and beat defenders off the dribble. Santiago tries to feed inside. Phillips saves it to Clark. Now six on the shot clock. Santiago gets into the lane. Phillips, not that time. Clark keeps it alive. Stolen by Nimbo Hammonds. Great strip down low. Hammonds has it deflected away by Robin James. Santiago spinning behind the back. The three. Would have been nice if it went. And that would have gotten the crowd into it. A tough foul there by Eric Clark. Not a smart play. You need to get away from there. Not a place you want to give the foul. Bob Wenzel immediately off the bench. What are you doing? Here's that look by Santiago. The spin, the behind the back, looked like Earl Monroe on that one. A wide open, easy look from three from James. It's on the rim, and that would have gotten the crowd really into it. How cool. Comes out Omo Moses. Substituted in for Mike Jarvis. And a timeout call with... Can't convert the first of two, and Anthony Wise is over the back of Kobosovsky. GW with 10 team fouls, so Kobosovsky is going to get a chance to shoot two. Rutgers with nine team fouls at this point. And Wise did not live up to his name on that one. You do not want to come over the back on a missed foul shot. And once again, Rutgers, because GW is over the 10 foul bonus, they'll march to the foul line with two shots each time. Cool comes back in for George Washington. Antoine Hart and Anthony Wise check out. Double Sofsky, who is the second leading free throw shooter in the Atlantic 10 at 80%. And that compounds the problem. No time comes off the clock. You give up the foul and allow the second best foul shooter in the league to step to the line, extend the lead to 11. Biggest lead of the second half for Rutgers, 11 points. Inside, they work it. Devon Jones and Kobosowski picks up the foul. That'll be his third. In the second half, Rutgers is shooting 60% from the field to a 45% mark for George Washington. Second straight game that Rutgers has come out on fire in the second half shot, 62% in their comeback win up at Bonnie's on Saturday night. Ron Jones is now in double figures with 10 points. 
GW needs to try and get up and create something with some type of full court pressure. He makes both. It's a nine point lead for Rutgers. Once again, here's this press, but Rutgers has been able to throw over top. It has not given them much problems as once again, they get the ball up into the half court. Rutgers has three good free throw shooters on the floor in Carter, James, and Kowalski. Fifteen on the shot clock. Carter has to clear out. Sandy Alio gets out of the way. Five on the shot clock. Phillips over Alexander Cool for two. What a tough shot, too, because good defense from Cool straight up. But Phillips elevates over the seven-footer. Vaughn Jones trying to answer the other way. Rebounded by Robin James. Rutgers will be patient with 3.35 remaining. The decision by Carter continues to play with good savvy on the basketball floor. And spreading the floor, no one in on the low post. Carter leans in to Kwame Evans, lowers the shoulder and draws the foul with seven seconds remaining on the shot clock. You see Mike Jarvis there trying to figure out what can we do? Our full court pressure hasn't forced turnovers. Rutgers got it into the front court and they've been able to handle the ball. Again, we talked about Rutgers and Bob Wenzel trying to spread the floor and they've consistently beaten GW off the dribble tonight. Al Carter, who leads Rutgers in assists and steals and in free throw shooting. That was 15 points. Pete Marcotte getting ready to come in for the shooter. And this is the second. And there's Kwame Evans, who has four personals, with the rebound for George Washington. Here's where GW, who was so hot early on from beyond the three, they need to find that range again. And Evans can't hit from beyond the arc. Kobosowski rebound. All of a sudden, everything going Rutgers' way. Comfortably ahead now with the 12-point margin. Under three minutes left. Give Bob Wenzel and his staff a lot of credit. You know, Rutgers struggling early on. They could have folded. Instead, they bounced back and have played their best basketball late in the season. A win here would get them one game within 500, and they get a kind bounce at the home rim for Al Carter. He has 17 points. Yes, they have a second half to play yet as Alexander Cool has fouled out. Mike Jarvis is out of the coaching box. He's looking to pick one up. He's about at half court right now, and he needs to be careful. Well out of the coaching box. Check this out. This is out at half court. We see here Mike Jarvis trying to say there was a hole, but you see Kobel Sasky coming right across the screen there. Looked like clearly he picked up a elbow to the chops. Cool fouls out with eight points and nine rebounds. 2.22 remaining in this one. Ferdinand Williams, a sophomore from Perth Amboy, comes back in. Rutgers has scored 46 points in the paint to just 27 for Mike Jarvis and George Washington. In the first game, it went the other way where GW scored 38 to Rutgers' is 28. So Bob Wenzel, the Scarlet Knights, and again, so many of those points in the paint out in transition. Double Sofsky with eight points. And this is the way you want to write the script for senior night. No question about that. You get one of your seniors, Jamal Phillips, to step up with probably his best all-around performance this season. The type of senior night he'll remember. Omo Moses. Here's Nimbo Hammond. Can't hit the three. Moses, rebound. Rebounded by Robin James, who lost it. Kwame Evans. Count the basket and the foul. W showing they're not going to pack it in and quit. 
active on the offensive boards, and Kwame Evans comes up with the putback. Robin James picked up his third foul. See here the reach down below. Good strength by Evans to accept the contact and finish it off. And now Evans attempting the three-point play. He has 23 points. 79-65, just over two minutes left. And Damon Santiago is fouled in the backcourt. GW has no choice now, as you see Mike Jarvis and his son Mike Jr. looking on. Mike Jr., one of the assistant coaches for GW. Williams will go back to the line, and Santiago was shaken up on that hard foul. There's Mike Jarvis, the second. Played for his dad at BU, and after graduating, came down to GW. Right now, the restricted earnings coach for the Colonial. Santiago with just his second point of the night. He's averaged 27 minutes a game this season as a reserve guard. He makes both in Rutgers. Now with a 16-point lead, two minutes left. They're over their magic number of 70 when the Scarlet Knights score over 70. This will be their 12th win to just four losses. Hammond scoring for the Colonials. He has 21. And a traveling violation called on Santiago. He disagreed with the ball. Thought he had put the ball to the floor before he traveled. But GW picks up the turnover off their full court press. Bob Wenzel, Mike Moses, Tom Abadamarco, Jeff House. The Scarlet Knight coaches. Here's Williams with the tip in and a timeout called. 141 remaining. So George Washington finds itself down 81 to 69. We'll take a break and return. Off the GW timeout. Santiago has taken his lumps the last two plays. <laughs> well, he's going to have to earn his points the second time he's been the recipient of a tough foul. But helped up off the deck 